What I am creating is a very special set of dice. This here is my latest prototype, a d20, and my goal is to create a full set from d4, d6, d8, etc. The dice are full of LEDs and can light up all sorts of different colors and patterns, and they know which face is up so they can react accordingly. This die, for instance, lights up differently if it lands on a 20 or if it lands on a 1. They look and feel just like regular playing dice. And in fact, they are meant to be used as dropping replacement in your favorite board game or role playing game. Their primary purpose is to add an extra layer of visual excitement. They will come out of the box preset with fun colors and animations, but you'll be able to completely customize them. And the way you will do this is with a simple app on your phone. So if you want, for instance, the dice to be really flashy when you roll a double six, or maybe you just want them to always light up shades of pink and purple, regardless of the number, you'll be able to do that. Just pull out your phone, pick a new preset, or make your own custom animations, program the dice, then put your phone away and go on playing your game. Now, of course, you can also keep your phone out and communicating with the dice while you're playing. And at that point, a ton of possibilities open. Your phone can start keeping track of all your roll results. It can send that information over to an online D&D platform, such as Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds. You could play mixed medium games where you're interacting with a video game using the dice. Or you can just have your phone read out the roll results. Six, three. It's up to you how far you want to take it. Now, putting electronics in board games is nothing new. It's been done many times before. In fact, right now, there are already existing smart dice and even light-up dice. What makes these electronic dice different is how much they are like regular dice. From the dimensions to the materials, they feel and handle just like regular dice. And that wasn't something particularly easy to achieve, but it is my belief that if these are going to be successful, then this is the way. Offering something new without taking anything away or adding any friction to an existing experience. Take the battery, for instance. It uses a small coil to recharge inductively. And that was so that I didn't need to have any sort of protrusion or connector on the outside of the die. As a result, the dice are incredibly strong and resistant. They can be dropped, stepped on, submerged, and they're gonna keep working. When you're done, just put them back in their case and they'll recharge for your next game. While I'm still doing a good amount of research on combinations of colors and materials for the dice, I do know that I will be offering multiple options as well as multiple sets. I'm even considering offering blank cores so that people can create their own designs. Another thing that I'm really focusing on with this latest prototype is manufacturability. I've already reduced the bill of material significantly from previous revisions, and I'm also simplifying the assembly process, slowly converging towards a more foolproof way of putting the dice together. Because of course, the easier I can make it for a factory to replicate and test my process, the cheaper I'll be able to get my dice manufactured for. If you want to know more about the assembly process or the components or materials that I used, all that information is on the Hackaday project page. Thanks for watching.